Hi, welcome back to Sketchbook Club. A few weeks ago, I talked about this book, you may remember, Ceramidas South of France. And um, it's just a beautiful book that has, has inspired me. And, and a lot of other people were interested um, to know more about Sarah after we aired that little chat, or um, we had that meeting, let's say, of the club. Anyway, so Shirley Levine, who is um, a friend who I've known through the internet and through um, living in New York. Um, she happens to have a connection at Workman Publishing, which is Sarah's uh, publisher. And um, Shirley was able to speak to Sarah's editor and ask her if she would be willing to talk to me, which she was. And um, I had a bunch of chats with Sarah and asked her if she would be willing for me, you know, to let me record an actual interview. And so I did record this little interview that I want to share with you today. Um, it is, it is um, recorded on, you know, um, over the internet, so it is not fantastic quality. You won't actually see me, you'll hear me, but you'll see Sarah in her kitchen on a rainy um, Wednesday in, uh, in Sussex, and she's going to show us some of her sketchbooks, and she's going to um, tell us the stories behind some of her beautiful books. Um, Sarah has never had never been on FaceTime or Skype or anything like that before, so it was her first kind of video conference experience. But she was a trooper, and um, you'll see that the stage production of it is is sometimes a little bit off. But I think there's a huge amount to learn from her, and it was really exciting to chat with her. So, without further ado, let's go to that conversation. I hope you enjoy it. Hi, hi, Sarah. So. Um, how are you today? I'm okay. Thank you. Good. How are you? <laughs> Good. So, so, so this, this is not a familiar thing for you, doing video chats and the like. It's not your technology. This is the first, first time I've done it. All right. Good. Well, I'm honored in that case. I, I'm not very good at it, so here we well, go. We'll I'm see. Sure I'm, I'm sure you'll become expert soon. Um, so so I, I, there's so many things that I would like to know about your art and your story. And I think other people would too. So um, I want to begin by: Could you just tell us a bit about yourself? Like, where did you grow up, and were you were you um, a creative child? What sort of what kind of childhood and upbringing did you have? Uh, I grew up in in Sussex, where I'm living now. Well, actually, not far from here, about forty miles away. Um, I had an elder brother, and. Oh, I had lots of rabbits and animals, and I was, I suppose I, I did always draw. And I was never discouraged by my parents, partly because my mother had also been at art school and she'd done fashion. Um, and uh, just fairly normal childhood, which was sort of, you know, normal problems and not problems. And then I, I went to London to art school and... Uh, do you want to know about that? Yeah, absolutely. Did you study? Um, we did you study to be an illustrator or? A, or well, actually, I I did I don't know if it's, it's not I don't know if it's the same structure in England. You do something called the foundation course, or you did then. This was quite a while ago, which I did in Eastbourne in East Sussex, and then I went to London where I studied graphic design, and then I went to St Martin's and where I did postgraduate course in illustration, which really, it was fantastic because it gave you studio space and really, really good people to to learn things with, talk to. I mean, um, who were some of the teachers that particularly influenced you at that time? Well, I suppose the main one was Fritz Wagner, who who is an illustrator, was an illustrator. Um, and there was somebody called Sylvie Turner who taught printmaking, and I can't remember what else. Actually, that's about all. What was remember. what was your um, intention at that time? Did you want to become an illustrator? I mean, there's such a some strong kind of graphic design sense in everything that you make. Um, was that where you were going? I th I think I did. Yes. You wanted to become a, a designer or an illustrator? An il illustrator. Sorry, yeah, illustrator. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And so what did you do once you graduated? Did you 
how did you begin your career as an illustrator? Well, I was really lucky in the degree show. A few people approached me to do work for, for like the I think Sunday Times magazine. And I think one of my first jobs was actually going up to Scotland to the Spey Valley, Valley, Valley to do drawings for a whiskey distillery. Ah. Then I, I did, I did um, drawings for Harper's and I did the, a regular health uh, column drawing every month for Cosmopolitan and various... I'm just trying to think actually. Oh, and I had an exhibition at the workshop, which was run by Mel Kalman, the late Mel Kalman, who who died, and that was terrific. And then I came to New York, and I met up with somebody who became my agent, Ted Riley, and was often various various work things, uh, New York Times, and uh, and so on, so on. And then on uh, the day before I left to come back to England, we went to Workman Publishing. No, it had been the day before. Left my folder, and the day I left, we I went in. We went back in, and uh, Peter Workman said, "Right, what would you like to do first? And that's how I sort of got started. You know, it was up. So, uh, Pete, yeah. So Peter it, Workman was the founder of Workman Publishing. That's right. And uh, when Very they imaginative. Um, yeah, terrific. Man. It's a great public. It's actually its offices were about a block from my house. Um, I'm not sure if they're uh, still there, but uh, I always had. Oh, I always, on, but you've done things for them too. Well, I did a book for an imprint of theirs, um, and I have shown stuff to Peter. I wanted to do a book about dogs once, um, but mm -hmm. it never quite happened. Um, I ended up with Chronicle Books, which has been oh, my right. equivalent thereof. Yeah. Um, I mean, Workman has very diverse kinds of books that they do. I think their biggest book is What to Expect When You're Expecting. What, yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's, mm -hmm. um, that's been like a perennial bestseller for a long, long time. Um, so what did you think when he said that? What, we, what, was, what, what kind of ideas did it sp spark in you? Well, I, I, it was off the top of my head because I thought it was probably the most unlikely idea of this thing I most wanted to do was uh, I wanted to do that, the garden book. Right. Which has sort of text and oh God, text and illustrations, yes. Yeah. So um tell me tell me what the process was like of making this book. Um pretty intense. Mine took quite a long time to do. And I, it was something I just felt so sort of rather passionately about. Um what was your process? Would you get up every morning and go and sit outside I would and draw get up something? Every morning at about six and read something about garden history, and then just work through the day. Have lunch with a friend, have dinner with a friend, and work till late at night. It uh, pretty well every day. So, how long did you work on this book? Three or four years. Three or four years like that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I came. I came to New York. I think once or I can't remember. Once. That's amazing. That's an enormous amount of time to spend yes. just on one project. But it's so varied. This book. I mean, it feels like each page is is a particular work, right? I mean, it's well, each page is hopefully a separate sort of entity. Yeah. Right. Right. So I'd love to know a bit about the actual process of you making these pages because there's so many little aspects of this book that I really like, um, and one of them is. Well, one of it is just the smallness. Like, I feel like everything you make is incredibly small. And I feel like I'm getting older and older because the most recent book of yours, I got a bowl of olives. And I had to really go and make sure that I was sitting in bright light to look at it. Just cause yeah, I, okay, that, that was that was meant, designed to be lo quite a bit larger. Oh, but was, so we okay. won't go into that. Um, but, yes. Okay, but it, just in general, I feel like your work is, is small, right? I mean, are these, mm. I mean, in the garden book, is that, is the size of the uh, um, same size? Same, same size. So that's it's actually. Awesome. So you, yeah. So that's. Um, I I couldn't do that anymore. I couldn't yeah. do it now. It's, just, it's hard to even it. read it now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, so tell me, what is a lot of what you do that I think is really nice is drawing with a watercolor brush, right? Yeah. I mean that. 
is like how, is there preparatory drawing to this, or is it just literally that you're sitting down the way I would with a pen and you're just drawing with a with a brush? Are you drawing with pencils beforehand? No, 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 straight with the brush. Straight with the brush. I, yes, on, on mo most of the watercolor ones. Yes. I mean, there's some that has a little bit of line in it, but but generally there's that. Yeah. Generally. Um, yeah, and would generally. you? Would you design these pages, or would you just sort yes. of, yeah, you would design, so you yes. do like a thumbnails and layouts and all yes. that kind of stuff? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Um, and would you generally work on them on site? Like, would you go and sit in the garden or sit with a carrot or in um, your studio? Or how would that work? I might have things like carrots on my desk. Um, some of them are, not many of them actually, it's actually... I actually, well, some I, yes, some, uh, like, like this one, can you see? Mm -hmm. Right, uh, that, those are sort of drawings that um, I did outside with friends, old friends, and, but things like this, I would just do in my workroom. Right. Um, I love little things you have in here, like the seed packets and stuff like that. Did you actually make those and yes. photograph? This this is so nice. Yes. Um, there's a, a friend of mine who teaches actually at my at my school. Her name is Jill Weber. I have to send you a little film that we made about her because she did a, a whole accordion book about her garden, and she had little oh, seed yes. packets, and she also had she made little versions of all the tools and the, and the sort of scissors and the hose, and out, then. Out of out of she cut them out of out of cardboard, and they sat in a little glassine envelope that was stuck in it. And there's a map of the garden, and it just just goes on and on. And I mean, it's just fantastic. You, yeah, you'll really like it, I think. Um, but she spent that was again a record of her, of her garden. I also feel like this this sort of like pages like this that feel like this sort of like almost like 18th century mm. um, things. Well, what, I what, was in inspired by very old gardening books particularly that one yes I and see. that sort of layout yeah because even like the the um the there's things on topiary and stuff like that that all have that that feeling but then there's then there's also your writing um yes where you're I guess using different colored inks with a with a dip pen is that with a steel nib well, is that what it is? It, they're all different. Some are uh, with a pen and some are just with a brush and di different uh, colors of watercolor. So, but like this, something like this. That was with a brush. So that, and they are they really, really at this at this size? Yes, it's a very 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 small brush. That's insane. I know. <laughs> <laughs> what did you? What was? Why did you work so small? It, it just felt a kind of natural size, really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is also such a beautiful page, where the right. where yes. the where the type is sort of behaving like like it's growing. Um, yes. So so. This book is is a, f a fantastic book. I mean, do you, do you look back at it? What's your relationship with your old books? Oh, it's sort of mixed. It depends which book you're talking about. Well, this one then. How do you feel this about one. it now? Um, well, I can tell you all, all sorts of things that I'm sort of hate and embarrassed by, and <laughs> some things I might not quite like, and sort of memories. And it's kind of the past, and. But it must represent a chunk of your life, two, three or four yeah. years, where you were yeah. working on this every yeah. day, yeah. It's like a job that you look back on. Yeah. Yeah. These pages of your colleagues, sort of, yeah. Um, so what happened when this book uh, was finally finished? And you, you, did you, presumably you sort of talked to Peter Workman, he said, what would you like to do next? And then you came back four years later with, with this big stack of pages? How did that work? You mean for the French book? Or for no, the In and Out of the Garden. Um, oh, I think I sent pages to the editor Sally Kowalczyk and to Paul Hansen. The so as you were do as you were doing them, you would send pages. Yes, and I can't remember. I think she came over once, and I I went over there a few times. Yes, that's and had you designed the whole book in advance? Did you have a sense of it, or was it just sort of you would say, "Oh, I feel like drawing 
you know, green beans and I'd go out and do that? Or was it much more s- organized I than that? I think it would be more sort of, sort of more organized. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's just the way I do books. <laughs> I just feel like doing something and then pick, ra- post-rationalize it. Well, I think I knew what subjects I would wanted to cover. So it was more more that. I knew there was going to be peas and beans and strawberries or whatever. So that sort of dictated what what was going in. Now, so, so the book finally was done and it came out. How did you feel when it came out? So, so that's, it's, it's just such a weird feeling. This thing is sort of part of you and it's not part of you and you want to get on and do something else. Right. And I, I still can't quite work out what I feel about it. So it's like a child that you... Yes. <laughs> and how did other people feel about it? How did, what was the reaction to this book when it came out? Um, well, I think sort of both, really, from good and bad. Yeah? I mean, did it feel like it was... Has it been a definition for you, this book? Like, has it defined how people see you? I mean, I feel like it's sort of a classic book, as is as is um, the France book. I mean, it feels like that has solidified how people see you somewhat. Oh, yes. I suppose that's sort of rather... um, Oh, I remember going somewhere in France um, and to a party um, and meeting someone. She said, I thought you were going to be an old lady with knitting needles in your hair. (laughs) (laughs) How old were you when you did this book? Uh, I think about 25, 26. Really? Yeah. 24, 25. So I that. That's interesting. It does seem like an older person did it. And okay. I think that's a good thing. Okay. Do I do it I don't know. I mean, it's, it's just, I think it's just very, um, I mean, maybe it's because it feels like it reaches back in time to other yes. kind of definitions of what a garden is. So it doesn't necessarily yes. mean you had to be 300 years old to have written it. But anyway, um, so it was the South of France book. Was that the next book that you did? That, that was, yeah. yeah. So what can you tell me about that book, about how it came to be and what it was like to make it? It came, came to be um, because I was supposedly doing another book for Workman on a different subject. And at that time, I was spending a lot of time in France um, because of the relationship. And um, I had lots of drawings on France. And I was at Workman's, went over to New York. And again, Peter said, why didn't, why didn't you turn these into a, a book? And Sally Kowalczyk, who was the editor then, um, thought, oh, well, it should be like a, a, a year and in France, which so that gave it its kind of structure. And had you planned to spend a year solidly doing it? Was that the sort of thought behind it? Um, no, it was actually a rather sort of interrupted time because actually I left France because I came but unwell, came back to England and was unwell for some time and then and, and wasn't able to draw. And when I've Finally, sort of began to get back to it. Paul Hansen, who was a lovely art director, he came. I was living in London. He was living in Oxford. Then he came down. I did all over the floor in the workroom where I was then, and um, he picked it up and then put it into shape. So that's how. What sorts of changes did he have to make to it? I mean, it's it seems so perfect and fully fully formed. I, did, um, I really don't even remember, but I, I do remember that uh, we had a weekend in Oxford and uh, Sally came over and we, we sort of finally put it all together. It seems like it must have been a lot of fun to do. I mean, it feels like all the little yes. research things you do. There's so many jokes in it. It's just a really yes, fun book. Yes, it was fun. And as I said to you, when, when I first saw the, the piece you had done about about this book, I said it was kind of painful because I don't think I felt quite so sort of, um, what's the word, sort of inspired by doing something as I, I was when I did this book. Right. It's sort of, it's really nice to remember what that felt like. There's something really nice about having a big idea that that 
that you can sort of see, you can see how you can go in lots of different directions with it, but it all kind of holds together because it has a big idea at its core. And this, I mean, this, this is a simple idea, a year, but, yeah. um, but it gives it coherence that I think gives you freedom. Yeah. I mean, I think that that's, that's, I, I've never had that kind of structure in any book I did. I, the, one of the first books I did, I originally sort of thought of it that way, that it would be about a year, but there happened to have been like several other books that were about a year in New York at the time. Um, so I didn't end up doing that. And it always, I, I've always felt like it's, it must be so nice to have that structure. So how have you structured your books? Um, like Everyday Matters, which was one of the first books that I did that was sort of an illustrated memoir, was a book that I had to kind of... I wrote it thinking that... I, it was basically my journal. It was my sketchbook with the things that had gone on, but it lacked any kind of uh, an architecture to it. And that was partly because I was reluctant to talk about my wife's accident and her... Mm -hmm. Um, and that was was actually the reason behind it, but I felt like it wasn't my story to tell, and so I was reluctant. And then, basically, between speaking to an editor and speaking to my wife, I sort of felt like, okay, well, it's I guess it's my story too. And so once once I'd kind of gotten over that, then I saw it having a narrative arc, sort of where it was about our life, and then the accident, and then my kind of confusion and then my finding drawing and then how drawing ultimately helped me to appreciate my life and then helped me to expand. So it took a while to get that and I never felt entirely comfortable with it because when you do something that's about your life, it, oh, yeah. yeah, real life doesn't really have that kind of narrative mm -hmm. structure, but you kind of mm -hmm. have to impose it. So I've always felt a little fraudulent because of that, but it's, it's fine. It, it's no, what it's was necessary. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, but a lot of times it's just kind of the, it's just my outpouring of stuff and then later on trying to kind of force it into a box. So, but I think you're a designer by, by nature and you're perhaps you're more controlled about things than I am. I know. I, I think I'm sort of, sort of reluctant to put some, to reveal too much about myself, which is what you, I remember you said, um, in my books. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that was my feeling. I think that that's this. There's a certain. On one hand, there's a really clear voice in your books, but it's not entirely clear. I mean, that, that woman saying that she thought you were an old woman is sort of to me indicates that that it's like, it seems like you're. It's almost like a persona that you have in these books, but it's unclear as to whether that's really you or not. And the South of France book. I mean, you said that there was some sort of difficulties that you're going through in your life, and yet this book seems to kind of glide through the year and well, enjoy it, finding lots of things to enjoy. And I'm I don't know. Glad just, it does. Yeah, I mean, it, it's always made me want to go and spend a year in the South of France, honestly, because between the food and the, your relationship with nature and everything, it's just, it's just a beautiful story. And it, I think yeah. that that's probably what a lot of people feel about this book is it just, it's about life and, mm. you know, eating, sinking your teeth into it. So that's really nice. Oh, oh I, I, do you remember you talked about those pieces of paper? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're actually uh, Japanese visiting cards. Oh. Um, oh, after the In and Out of the Garden came out, uh, the, the head designer for a company called Mitsukoshi asked me to go to Japan, and they were thinking of doing a range of products, which they did. Did and I worked with them for 20 years. So one of the nice things was I got all these beautiful pieces of paper that he used to give me, and, and I've got boxes of them over where I work. I should have brought them over. And um, so that's how all those drawings come about. Uh -huh. That's what the paper is. I see, I see. Okay. So t tell us a bit about... Um where you are now. So this is your house. You have a separate studio. Can you tell us a bit yes. about your sort of set up there? Um, well, it's quite, it's in the country, but it's not, uh, not too isolated. And I work in a building just outside of the house, which is an old, is com old converted uh, coach house, well, half of it. And with my dog, my husband died 
four years ago. Ah, I see. So, um, so is this you and your dog? Just me and my dog. Now, so what are you making art about? I think you told me you were making art about your dog, right? That's well, I, that, that's one idea, and I'm just working on lots of different ideas. I'm just a bit, a bit, I suppose a bit lost at the moment. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing. Um, but I'm sort of, I'm drawing and I'm brewing. Do you want to look? Look what I picked this morning. <laughs> Can you see these? Is that a quince? No, 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 I'm growing quinces. These are Ulin's gauge. So they're green like gauges. Little, they're like little green gauges. They're absolutely, would you like to try one? They're really <laughs> delicious. I yes. just feel I could give you one to try. <laughs> they're so good. Um, but yes, there are quinces here too. So do you have a nice garden there? Yes, there's a lovely garden. And do you, do you, a bit sort of, you know, neglected, wild looking, but... So nice. So, so um, are you in the process of working on a book or you're sort of looking for spark? Is that what you... I'm looking for spark. Do you want me to tell you what to do? Yeah, well, sure. <laughs> How does that work? Do, do, you, do, you, do you often have conversations with people that spark the idea or is it do you find yourself flowing in a particular direction? Um, well, it's usually, it's usually flowing. I mean, uh, this... This book just came about a baby book. Did you have you got that one? I don't have that one now. Um, because you can't the mm. little envelope for baby's hair. And this this came about because I was designing lots of children's clothes in Japan. That's where you put your first tooth. Oh, sweet. Which Japanese found extraordinary because they published it in Japan. They didn't understand that. Because when you uh, have the first tooth, you actually throw it up on the roof. So that ah. was quite a different concept for them. They don't have a tooth fairy. They don't have a tooth fairy. And this book, I did, did you see that one? Yes, I have seen that one. But tell us about it. Um, well, that, that actually I did with an English publisher. And it came about just talking to him and just... Um, I'd had, a, so I had a drawing. Um, oh, well, actually, I had a drawing on table manners, which was very similar to that, and that sort of sparked the whole book. It's almost a comic. Sorry. It's almost like a comic. Um, no, sort of. It was uh, probably called comics are different in America. Like a co here. like a comic book, like a. Y yeah, a little bit. Sort of. Yeah. I mean, a story told in pictures and words. Yeah. Yeah. And I suppose it was the most sort of bi biographical one. Yeah. Autobiographical. Autobiographical. Yeah, about you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so when was the last, your, when did your last book come out? Bowl of Olives came out about, was it four, five, five, four years ago, three years ago, I can't remember. And so, so was that around the time that your your husband passed away? Then, yes, I think it was. Yes, it was just after. I see. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. So, um, so can you tell us a bit about what you're actually doing in your sketchbook these days? Can you show us a few pages from your sketchbook? This is my current sketchbook. Put the bashed up. This is a page I did. Uh, uh, in France, whoops, staying with Paul and Anne-Marie. Cyp Cypress trees. That's her garden. And this is her garden again. Whoops. Yes. And then, oops, sorry. This is, ah, oh, this, this is, right, so sort of no, I did, when I was work, I was working in a ceramic factory in, in Italy in Deruta, so I did a lot of drawings and then. Wait, hold it up. I can see it. Oh, sorry, sorry, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then but, they turned into ideas for children's china, which was actually uh -huh. manufactured in Japan. Um, 
They're rather cut off a lot of a uh, lot of my books because. Um, so they cut out pages and then use them for something. They, they've cut yes, exactly. So there's quite a bit of writing, mm -hmm. and uh, bit my the fish are there. They are there, and then there's one I did when I was. I met a friend, and we were he was. Uh, doing drawings for a book and I went along and I spent all day drawing. It was fantastic. And then we would meet up for dinner and it was just a really Are those tiles? Tile floor tiles, floor tiles. in um, Murano. No it's not. It's in Torcello. Um little drawings. Are those drawn with a fountain pen? What do you draw with there? That's this, I, that was a felt tip pen. So are you are you um, do you have particular art supplies and pens and and sort of types of watercolors that you're committed to, or do you not really care? I just have a, a very an old watercolor box, very dirty, very messed up. I'm not very good about. Keep it all tidy, and friends who are sort of meticulous cannot imagine how I can get clean colours out of my water watercolour box. I think most of the um, watercolours from here have been torn out, cut out, because they were used in bowl of olives, so there are not many in there. Um, but I can show you them in the book. Uh, and and what about things like brushes? I mean, you're obviously using very small brushes. Are you very are you particular about those? Do you have any things that you really love? Yeah, I, I, when I did the first book, I had very, very tiny sable, short-haired sable brushes. Um, now I'm onto slightly bigger ones. Um, and I, I used to use a repeater brush. Yeah. But I, I use pens like this now. Mm -hmm. And um, Micron I Pigma. Tend... What? The Micron Pigma from Sakura. It could be. It is. Well, it's not. Yes, that, I think it's that sort of thing. Yeah. And I tend to use watercolor blocks rather than tubes, only because I'm sort of rather messy. So. You mean pan, like a pan? Yes. Yeah. Pan. yeah. I see. I see. Um, do you do you mix a lot of colors? I mean, it yes. seems like your your colors are tend to be sort of isolated, like the, the a little piece of blue, a little piece of red. I mean, they're not. Yes. You're not doing sort of giant washes and all that sort of thing that much. Oh, not not very much. Um, oh, there's some of these were in the French book. Yes. Yeah, those are beautiful. Okay. Do you do you work fairly quickly? Like if you sit down to draw, do you knock out a drawing pretty quickly? Uh, it, uh on the whole, yes. There, there may, may be sort of twenty or thirty drawings till I get to something uh, that sort of works, or it may be it just just works straight off. I think it sort of it depends, and also the more you draw, the more you get into it, and it sort of comes more easily. Plus, <clears throat> there's times when something sort of magical happens between you and the paper. And so it very much depends on the paper, I think, for, for what you're working on. Do you find um, the paper, because you, you use, um, remember you were telling me that you had sketchbooks that were sort of your brand, like, the, yeah, that those are sort of the Ceramita official <laughs> sketchbooks. <laughs> yes, and you see it's got sort of, Beautiful handmade Japanese paper. Um, now, where does one get those books? If if somebody was interested in buying one, where would one get one? I don't think you can get them anymore. Oh, really? You have stockpiles of. Uh... I've got a little pile of them. But when I get really, when I get, I'm just show you because I, 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 one of the things you refer to. I often do it when I get sort of stuck on work. Oh no, no, it wasn't there. Um, I, t I use potatoes, and I, I print 
with potatoes. Which yeah, I noticed that in the part. South of France book, there's, there's a number yes, of Yes, I'm trying to find the one that... Are you particular about this type of potato that you use? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> you are, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, they just have to be when you cut them, sort of the very smooth ones, and they sort of dry them out. And do you put, use watercolour with them? Uh, it, or do you use a stamp pad? No, watercolour. Yeah, watercolour. Watercolour. I, I, yeah. I sort of paint, tend to paint on them. So it's not really potato printing, so I don't cut, cut a shape out. And then it sort of... It, the colour sort of diffuses beautifully on the potatoes. So when you print it, you've no idea what's going to come out. Right, right. It's kind of fun. But these, you do you remember you? Yes, yes. About? I they, that. But they were just sort of little blobs, blobs of paint I did with a paintbrush and I drew a face on them. Right. Yeah, you had the whole thing about the striped shirt. That I particularly like. Yes. Yeah, that was very really nice. Which was very nice because you were wearing a striped shirt when I know, you were I, talking I, about it. I know, I, I like a striped shirt myself, but um, good. So do you draw every day or most I try days? To, yes. Yeah. yes, I try to, yeah. And do you, do you sort of pick up your sketchbook and say, I feel like drawing and then sort of look around for something to draw or, or does it work the other way around? No, I <clears throat> go to where I'm working and I sort of pick up where I was the day before early. And um, like I was fired by doing a series of drawings um, of the room and the contents of the room and the dog and and so I, I sort of got quite excited about that and that lasted a few weeks and then I got got excited about because it was crab apple jelly making time and all the colours of when you chop up the crab apples and it is just so beautiful and. Um, so that involves me for a few weeks too. So we can look forward to your Sarah Midas Sussex then, a year in the studio. Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 it would be very nice, but uh, I don't know. Do you have any drawings of your dog that you mentioned? That you, do you have any of those handy? No, I don't actually, I'm afraid. Because that would be a nice series. David Hockney did a really nice book about his dachshunds. I don't know if you've seen that. Yes, that's lovely. Yeah, that's really nice. Who are some of the artists that you like who have inspired you? Uh, are, you are you a fan of Hockney's, for instance? Not a great fan. Um, I love a lot of the uh, um, old, old books that have inspired me a lot. And people like Palmer and Blake and... I'm going to, I, you know, I can never remember this, sort of Van Gogh and particularly his drawings and, and his writing and... Um, his, uh, his letters, like, to his brother. Yes, it's just beautiful. I love those too, yeah, particularly when he would draw it with a reed pen. Yes. And, uh, yeah, there's something, there's something so nice about that and just seeing when he reports on a painting that he did and he does a little sketch of that yes. painting and then writes yeah. around it, yeah. yeah. I think, to me, he's just so endlessly inspiring, in part because I feel like he was on this 10-year mission, you know, to teach himself how to make art. And I feel like he went through a lot of things that everybody who learns to make art does, you know, all these kind of blind alleys that he went down. and and uh, But he was also such a tragic figure at the same time. Yes, yes, he was. There's a new film that I just saw, uh, a trailer for, which is about his life, and it's entirely hand painted. Have you seen it? It's ev it's an animated film where they hire they have something like 150 painters painting in oil paints, painting the frames. It's incredible. Um, I'll send you a link to it. It's just oh, it's it. yeah, it's it's kind of hard to imagine. I hope it's and it actually has fairly well known actors in it. But then they filmed it, and then they took the film and frame by frame recreated it in oil paintings. So it seems so, like mind-bendingly a huge amount of work, but uh, it, looks really, it looks like his paintings have come to life. It's really fantastic. So. Well, look, thanks very much for talking to me. Thanks, and now that, you, now, you, now that you're uh, 
you, you converse it with the medium, we can uh, talk some more. And I'm looking forward to hearing more about whatever, whatever book you decide to do. But um, you've cleared up a lot of mysteries about these books of yours. So thank you so much for, for letting oh, us in on Thank you very much for asking me. Yeah, no, I, just, I know that there's many, many people out there who love your work and, um, mm. you know, it continues to mean so much to them. And that's, that's so that, nice. That's lovely. It is really it's nice. just so nice. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you so much, and thanks for uh, okay. for sharing today with me. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Bye bye then. Bye bye.